Hello there. So, um, a little short video for um, shoulder tendonitis uh, yoga therapy. And um, so always get a proper diagnosis and um, make sure that's what you're working with, but and um, never pushing into any pain. So you wanna do, you know, it's important to keep the joint mobile and strengthened and, and good blood circulation, but you don't wanna push into pain or discomfort. So, um, so this video is done for my son who's kind of, has a um, shoulder tendonitis, but um, looking to rehab to get back to activities. So, but just remembering that um, to start out, if you're in a lot of pain, rest is important and not um, pushing it. So the tendon, if you visualize it um, with tendonitis, there are micro tears in the tendon. So healing happens when it's when it's given um, time to heal, so not overusing it. So remember, rest is important and, um, and other things you can do when you first injure it, like ice and heat. But um, as we start to become, we start to really test or be really aware of movement, you can do some of these things and um, with the really attention to your body and the breath. So the breath helps you to not push it, um, but really just find your edge. So um, remember to breathe and ongoing, remember to, um, if you can get gentle massage in the shoulders, gentle stretching, um, always warming up and strengthening because once that tendon is um, vulnerable, it needs to stay healthy with continued um, care. So um, so I would suggest first, um, and one of the things you can do is um, to take some of the pressure out of the shoulders is strengthen your hands and your wrists and your forearms so that they take some of the um some of the um, the uh, brunt of whatever resistance you're doing. So we can do that at the wall with um, placing the hands on the wall and um, straight out from the shoulders. And this might be, this is the strengthening part. So this might be, um, you know, just kind of check in, make sure you're not pushing into pain, but we're gonna press our palms into the at shoulder height. So the crease of the wrist is kind of in line with the shoulder joint. And um, we're uh, externally rotating the upper arm bone. So just kind of spinning your inner elbows outwards as you do that. And that's gonna wrap the scapula, kind of drop the scapula down your back. And as you do that, then kind of grip with your fingertips. So then you feel the forearms really active, right? Your forearms active, your hand, your palm, fingers. Spread the fingers wide. So all 10 fingers are active. And we're stepping back about 30 centimeters from the wall. And just like a plank position. So you might um, bear a little weight here as you take about 10 breaths or hold for a minute. And so you just, um, you know, you feel the sense of support around the rotator cuff. So just take about, you know, maybe five to 10 breaths. As you press into your palms, you're kind of feeling the rotator cuff engage and the scapula slide down the back. And don't cut your exhales short because the exhale is when you relax and you kind of get present with your breath. You kind of, um, you're also telling the nervous system to calm down. So just really follow your breath. Calming our nervous system helps with pain. So it'll reduce the pain response in the body. And after that, about 10 breaths we might you might if you're not feeling pain 
you might then try a few um, chaturanga or, or their kind of yogic push-ups. But we're just gonna bend the elbows, keeping them in, um, in line with our shoulders. And so just bending and straightening. And again, still pressing into all 10 fingertips, activating the forearms, the palms, the fingers. So maybe taking about five of those, but really paying attention to the shoulder joint. So you might even just be going just an inch or so, right? So you're building that support for the tendons and you're increasing the blood flow in a safe way. Okay, so maybe five or five to 10 of those, just depending on your comfort level and not pushing into pain. So the other um, stretch you might do at the wall and, and kind of build a little more flexibility and strength is to take a down dog at the wall. So you might, and this might be, take a little longer to do because it's gonna take your, your arms up towards your ears and that could be um, really uncomfortable if you are first injured. So please pay attention to your body. So, so we can take our hands to the wall and just slowly start to walk back. And again, we're, we're um, using that, the grip of the fingertips, press into the palm, slowly walking our feet back to our down dog. And again, maybe 10 breaths as we start to lower. And I know not going into pain. So if you are here and you're starting to feel some pain, just stop there. And eventually with your breath, you might be able to start to lower um, a little bit further. But continuing as you heal, with each breath, maybe coming a little lower. So we can even start to walk the hands down a little bit. So we're coming, I'll just turn the video a little bit so you can see. So we're coming a little lower to this downward facing dog, the hips way back. All right, so just um, trying that out. And coming back up. And so see how you feel. Take a moment to pause. Always important, right? Just pause, feel your shoulders, let them relax. Take a breath. And one more, um, a couple more things for shoulders that are really helpful to kind of strengthen to bring the scapula down the back. We wanna kind of tuck our shoulder blades down the spine, but without protruding the lower ribs. So the lower ribs need to kind of knit back. So we strengthen the solar plexus here to kind of hold the lower ribs in. And then take the arms up. Now this will be when you're a little more um, comfortable, but this is a, a kind of a regular practice, ongoing practice of supporting your shoulders bringing the arms up in the Y position. And you need to see my thumb, so I'm gonna turn that up. So in the Y position and turning your thumbs back, right? So as you turn your thumbs back, you can feel the lower tips of your scapula just kind of slide inward towards the spine and down. So you might hold that maybe about 10 breaths again, really slowing down. So that's the Y shape. And then as you, um, then you're gonna kind of bring your arms down into a W. So we're gonna, but as you do that, you know, instead of bringing the arms forward, keep bringing them back and slowly lower the elbows down, right? So as you do that, you're gonna find the lower tips of the scapula just coming in towards the spine. And these little subtle muscles are bringing you know, uh, bringing the um, connection to these really small muscles right below the scapula.
And then again, try not to protrude the lower ribs, but keep them in as you slide the elbows down into that W shape. Keep your chin back and your head high. Good, and you'll hold that for maybe five to 10 breaths. And coming to the T shape. So we're gonna stretch the arms out to a T. And again, turn the thumbs back. And you'll feel a little more of that wrapping. Now it might be more serratus, like we're kind of strengthening this really subtle serratus to support the shoulders by turning the thumbs back. Right? So without lifting the shoulders or protruding the ribs, we want to kind of keep that stability. Thumbs back, hold for maybe a minute or 10 breaths. So that's a T shape. And then you'll bring your elbows in and down with forearms forward. So again, thumbs spin out to the sides. And we're gonna make more of an L shape with our arms. So we'll squeeze upper arm bones in, right to our sides. And then just slowly take your thumbs back, right? So this one you might be able to do at the beginning of your healing process. So you will, you know, kind of feel, um, you know, you're not lifting overhead. So this one might be more doable towards the beginning. And maybe hold again for five to 10 breaths. You feel that, right, in your scapula. So I don't know what you can see on my back, but as your elbows tuck into your sides, there's a little squeeze going on right here in the mid back. So, so then relaxing, just kind of let it all relax. Take a deep breath, soften. And a little stretch to practice of interlacing your fingers, pressing your palms forward. So lengthening, not rounding the upper back, but lengthening from your shoulders to your palms. Maybe feeling that, right? So it's just a stretch this way. And if that checks out okay, just hold for a minute or so. You're gonna strengthen parts of your rotator cuff here and stretch as well. And then if it's available without pain, start to lift. Right, so lifting the arms slowly, you know, until in your range of motion. Good, and you may hold that for a minute or so if you can without pain. And then you're gonna do that again, but switch the fingers. So bring the other forefinger on top and just do the same thing again. Stretching straight out first and then slowly lifting with awareness. So a couple ways to strengthen, a couple ways to stretch for shoulder tendonitis and um, and a couple ongoing kind of maintenance positions, the Y, the W, the T, and the L shape should be done just kind of daily, right? Especially with our, with our posture and forward head, shoulders, we're on our computer a lot. That is, um, causes these upper arm bones to round forward, to shorten the, the pectorals, the deltoid, and create some upper back roundedness, which puts our shoulder joint out of alignment. So that W, the L, the, or the Y, the W, the T with the thumbs back, and the L are gonna help with that strengthening lower scapula area. So, all right, so keep it up, keep doing it, take care. Self-care will keep you going in the long run. So maybe that's your mantra um, to say while you do these things. Self-care will keep me going in the long run. Present moment awareness. Healing takes time, so there's no quick fix. 
So that's a love. Namaste.